and I try to check in with him because uh, he's got all the latest uh, gadgets. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm likewise, <laughs> I'm a consultant in education and I'm the co-author of the Habits of Mind work. <laughs> Jake, um, while we're talking here, I, I want to set you, I don't think you are set up, so I think you need, but I'll check if I've got you invited in. Um, there's a staging site where you can play around with um, thinking partners that we're building. Um, I don't know how much you know about it at all. Is that where you um, is that where you go through different perspectives? They're like automated character, automated uh, personalities. Yeah, that's a good that's a good start. Yeah. Well, so as I'm talking, you can probably figure it out. But you're right on top of the post-it that has the password. Oh. So you need me to move. <laughs> just move down a little bit, up or down? Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then and then scroll across the blue post-it. Uh huh up there and you see the username and the password. Once you click on the now comment banner, it'll take you to that, it's staging.nowcomment.com. And you have to, a pop-up will come up and you have to put that in. Once you get past the pop-up, you then just use the Google button to log in, okay? And I'm setting up so that I can um, make sure of something here. Um, I was, uh, I, I had to put all those chairs around because mm -hmm. I was in here with a bunch of eighth graders, um, mm -hmm. today and we're setting them up to do this. So that's kind of going to be interesting because what we think of as teachers is <laughs> probably going to be same. different than what they think of. I mean, I can't even imagine what they're going to think of. Um, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, but I, let me just uh, check to be sure that I have invited Jake Jacobs. Fred's here. Good. Um, and What's the date for the next? I have to see the date for the next meeting. May 3rd. Mm. I wouldn't get that. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to log in here, but. What's happening? <coughs> I think I lost my uh, password. Pass for which? Um, am I supposed to log into now comment? No. Oh, sorry. You're logging into staging.nowcomment.com. Yeah, that link isn't working. Okay. Um, it, what happens? It just gets bigger, but but there's no hot link. It's working for me. I wonder. Go to just go to a new tab and go to staging.nowcomment.com. See if that works. For me. Yeah, I'm at staging. It says access denied. It would ask right. me to sign in. Yes, that, that's where you need to put in staging and progress through technology. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yes. Um, Jake, it's such a relief to see a young person like you not as confused as I am. <laughs> well, I'm still confused. Don't worry. <laughs> so because it's a staging site we it, we make it hard to get into right so, so the username is staging yes username is the word staging mm -hmm. and the password is three words progress through technology each of the words is capitalized oh okay no spaces progress it's interesting, isn't it, Paul? We spend so much time teaching kids how to do capitalization spaces and everything, and then we, we kill it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not, I'm not getting it right. Is staging capitalized too? No, it's all small. 
case. Staging and progress. No spaces through text. No. Only the first letter of each of those words is capitalized, right? Oh, that's a problem. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're in, and then and then once you get to now comment, <laughs> the staging now comment, you you need to log in with the Google button. And I have um, invited you using your um, park, your school account. Funk Park? Yeah. To a working group. Jill's here. Cool. I don't know what happened to. Um... There are five people here. Where are they? <laughs> That's okay. Oh, there he is. Fred, Fred. Fred, you're almost here. You're you're muted right now. You got to come up one and unmute. Go up one. Okay. Now am I audible? I hear you. <laughs> okay. Paul, we don't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. So Fred and I both had knee partial replacements on December 1st. But I didn't have the second operation. Did it. So thank you for coming with all of your issues and things. And Jill is here. Um, maybe she'll join us here. And so um, we're kind of all in different places. If you'll go with the flow, Fred, um, I think we'll be okay. Does that sound right? And then we'll catch you up, get you able to come back in here when and if you'd like to. Um, Jill was let me just go see if i can find her i'll be back oh hi fred i'm ben Akalik. yeah i was gonna i came back up to say introduce yourselves fred tell I tell tell ben about how you do digital digital learning <laughs> with your fingers in <laughs> elementary schools <laughs> my my big thing is string games string figures and let me grab a string. Uh, I don't know how we get a uh, a bigger view, but um, I go. We can see. Yeah. Hi, Paul. So that's like, good. Yeah. The the classic uh, single person game that a lot of people know is Jacob's Ladder. Yeah which I always call Osage Four Diamonds to give the Native American group that it's usually named for in the anthropological literature. But it is a figure that's known all over the world. And I've been doing this now for 10 years, full time, giving away 20,000 strings and have taught a, a full year's course with first and second graders doing nothing but string games and stories. Fascinating. So tell me more about that, because I'm not sure I really understand. <laughs> so a student would create a string game and then create a story, or what, what's, what exactly are you saying? My simplest example that I always start with the littlest kids is, you know, the teacup, cup and saucer, which is one of the simplest single person games. And then even simpler is to make a table where you just put your little fingers through the string and then put your thumbs under and now you have a table. And if you make the string shorter, that's a chair. And so you have three people and one of them makes the table and another one makes a teacup and you put the cup on the table and somebody pulls up a chair and you have a tea party. And <laughs> you take that little prompt and just run with it. It is fabulous what they come up with. Oh, I'll bet. That's wonderful. 
and Fred is a writing project colleague, so he's uh, he, he connects us to writing as well often. I think you do, don't you? <laughs> well, storytelling is writing; it, it just is isn't indeed. written. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and it's been more connected with theater actually and playmaking. I I did a, a long term with fourth and fifth graders, where they <laughs> made themselves into teams of their own choosing and created some of the most elaborate stories I've ever seen. We made a little temporary stage with a few desks and well, their, their favorite stories, many of their stories revolved around the four diamonds actually being diamonds. And so somebody would open the gate, which, which gets you into a cave where you find diamonds or mine diamonds or steal diamonds and then there, there's various things that you do with your diamonds once you've got them. and just So Fred, did you ever write about all this? I am in the process of writing a lot about it and I, I just love it so much. It's one of my great ambitions to combine all of this into a book and my latest inspiration is to weave it together as teacher classroom reflections, teacher instructional guide and personal memoir so well I expect to I, I mean I have to know all about it as soon as you do but it seems like you have a string story to tell oh yes <laughs> Jill Jill are you there she was there and oh, then she know. sort of disappeared I don't know yeah, I, I saw her go she was moving okay I guess I, I will. so but I uh, I'm here. I didn't know what to do. Uh, my, something's funky with my camera that it's showing out. Hello, everybody. Instead of flipped around to me, and I don't know how to flip it around. It's okay. We, I mean, I saw you for a moment, Jill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's okay. I, as long as we can hear you, I think that's important. yes. And you can see us, right? Yes, I cool. can see all so you. So why don't you um, why don't you brief us on how what we did today um, with your eighth graders in this room? So with Paul and my eighth graders, we went on to a doc, we went on to an article that was on Now Common and we were, because he's beta testing these thinking partners, he was showing my students uh, a little bit about the thinking partners and the different types of thinking partners and what they could do while they were reading. So we just started to delve into that. And I am a eighth grade language arts teacher and I, I work with your university and I met Paul through uh, another project through uh, Kristen Turner and Troy Hicks. So, but I'm, you know, after Paul, I got off the call with you. We just didn't have enough time, right? It wasn't that 35 minutes mm -hmm. is just not enough with the kids. But I really think it could be very fascinating to see. I'm always just saying to my kids, my students, trying to stretch their thinking. So I think it would be interesting to have this thinking partner. And I was thinking today, like, let, let me put up a chapter of a book or I'll give it to you that they've all read before and let them annotate it before. Let them think and put their thoughts. I always just have them put your thoughts. What is it being sparked by? And then let them come to it and see how the thinking partner's interpret things differently or pick up on other things. I think that would be a way. Joe, you're, you're already thinking work. of it in a pedagogical way. I, I'm but, just going to, I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. And, but, but I absolutely agree that that's maybe often the best way to go is to start with their own voice and their own thinking and back and forth with each other. And then a second or third time through, then invite the AI partners in. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the kids would find it fascinating, too, because, Paul, one of the things that when we were on that call and that I'm hearing from my kids is they just feel so adamant that they hope districts embrace it and let kids play because they feel like if they let kids play, it's not going to become this tool for cheating. It's going to become a tool. And I think a lot of people are afraid just that I hear in my district and around people are so afraid of the cheating. But if you let them play mm -hmm. and my kids, after you showed us initially with the other, um, you with know, the, the templates. templates that you made, they couldn't. Which, which is still real important, but yeah. Yeah. 
They couldn't stop playing with them. They wanted to try everything. Did they make up new ones? Well, we haven't even, so I have a group that's going to write now, that's going to write an article um, and I have about 10 kids. So I think we still, you know, I'm in the middle of a TED Talk project actually with them in Spain. So I'm a little bit like my time is limited. As soon as we get those TED Talks up next week, I'll have a little bit more time to play around with this because I would. This isn't the only thing you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, uh, yeah, cool, cool. That, that I'd be curious great. to know what kinds of uh, thinking partners they would be looking for. So, so would I. And I honestly think, um, you know, all year my whole focus is about stretching their thinking and thinking beyond the book. And everything. So I think they could really come at it and have some good ideas about what they wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, I would think that even a thinking partner in connection with some topic that really intrigues them, but they don't really know the other side of it would be very interesting. Would be lovely if every legislator could have a thinking partner. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I think actually for teachers, it it could be this great, you know, I really see it as an aid for them. Like I see kids becoming better, closer readers because of this. Mm -hmm. And if we took that approach, it wouldn't be one of those things like, oh, I'm worried that they're going to use this to do their annotations. It'd be like, no, the focus and the assessment should be on what did you and the AI come up with or what, you know, what did the AI show you? that you didn't notice or, you know, it should be more on the process, the assessment. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be a great contribution to the questions of how polarized we are today. Yeah. Because you're really, you know, being forced to say, you know, as much as I really am opposed to that other perspective, I need to hear it. And then I'd like to know what it is that they're thinking about and how they're thinking. I mean, it just seems like it's a, I mean, in a way, it's a shortcut. In another way, it's better if we can have the human engagement so we actually respect and come to know these people. But at least it's a beginning. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. So what's your position, Benna? Who do you teach? Benna, Oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? Yes. What? (laughs) Introduce yourself, Benna. Benna. Go ahead, Paul. You do go ahead, Paul. I, don't, I didn't know what you were asking me. Ben was part of uh, the team that in the 80s, would you say, with Art Costa, created the Habits of, of Mind and um, runs the Institute for the Habits of Mind and does who knows what else. And sure. she's so gracious enough to connect me whenever she can with all of her friends. Is that, is that a fair assessment? There's I think that's a very fair assessment. Work. And I'm more than open to share anything, but... You know, it's years and years of work. So I worked with the Coalition of Essential Schools. I've worked with lots and lots of people and I've co-authored many books and I'm working presently with Art Costa continuously since uh, 30 years ago. And um, now I'm also working with Alison Zamuda and we've been working on the concept of students at the center and personalized learning. So I'm sure that I am of like mind with you and all of you and your educational philosophy. And um, I'm just enjoying knowing Paul because he's refreshing and, and, and stimulating and inspiring some of the thinking I'm doing. So I'm going to jump into a demonstration. Is that okay? And everyone's kind of in a different place and it'll, I think it'll make some sense to some people and, and you'll, ask me questions afterwards. So I just want to show you how to build one of these things. And I, w- I need to, and so I've started to bring that up on the screen. If you're into the staging site, you can kind of follow along and do it yourself and go to your library. Um, but if you're not yet, that's okay. So, and Paul, let me interrupt. I'm going to jump out and jump back in so I can get the camera set up right. Okay. I'll be right back. So the, um, and, and the preface that I'll give to this is that what we're realizing we're creating um, in, in the, 
um, how do we say this, in the ecosystem of AI information, right? Um, the way it's normally used with chat GPT is you go there, you get information, maybe you have a dialogue, but that information exists, right? Um, we have developed it in a way that, so now we're starting with a text. It's, it's and a question and a, a thinking partner, and that goes out to the same thing as chat GPT, um, and it brings back information, and then it asks you to edit it. The, that's that's all part of what's going on here that I think is interesting for what we're creating. And I say that because there was never a grand you know, plan here. We're just kind of like, oh, we could do this, we could do that. But then the, the part of the world that's be become interesting is um, prompt engineering, right? And, and I actually love the idea that people are calling it AI whispering. So like you become an AI whisperer. Um, so it's, imagine AI is all these wild horses out there and we're kind of, we're kind of learning how to train the horses to make them do what we want them to do. Anyway, there are very few systems where students could go in and learn how to do that, but we're going to have that kind of system. And, and it's going to be, and I, so I want to show you how you do that. Okay. So, um, and I, I don't know if how much of that made sense, but I, I hope it does. Um, I'm going to come, so you're, you're going to, this is what you're going to have. You're going to be able to go to your library on now comment. And on the right side, there will be thinking partners. Now, the only thinking partners that will show up on yours are the ones you've created and the ones that an administrator on the site has made public. Okay, just a notice. So I'm going to manage partners, right? And I'm an administrator. Right now, everybody's an administrator on this, so everybody can do it. Um, and I just want to show you, let's show you, um, look, oh, there it is. So the, one of the more recent ones I made, I made with a, a teacher in Philadelphia, um, Bonnie um, Bentham who we're working with her seniors and they're going to be in here too. They're on break right now. But so I'll, I'm going to edit that one and show you what it looks like. All right. Just this afternoon, a short description was listed. So that's good. Um, so we came up with this name for the thinking partner, right? fire in quotes because her kids use the word fire all the time when they like something, okay? So a text that, some, what we want is a partner that will find all of the wonderful, beautiful things in the language and give that back to kids, right? Not just a summary, not just a, you know, whatever, not just keywords or whatever, but so we call it a fire detector, right? So this fire detector we have, I'll just read it to you, so, but, um, we, we have told it, this is what you have to, we have to learn how to do, is we have, we are training the chat GPT to talk to me the way an African-American high school student in Philadelphia who uses slang would, right? And believe it or not, it actually picks up Philadelphia slang, right? right. But tell, tell me why, tell me why it is worth, tell me why it is worth stopping and appreciating the way the author uses language in this paragraph. Also quote a couple of times from the text to give me examples. But then, and we've, something we've learned and we wanna teach each other, we're, we're ending with, end by finding a creative way to get me to reread the text and to get interested in the words, I'm sorry, immersed in the words and talk about what this means to me in a reply. Now, that wasn't our first version. That was probably our 10th version of this. But we, what we do is we kind of make the paragraph, see how it works, revise this sentence, try that sentence, see how that works. OK. Um, and I, I, the short description, uh, 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 let me see, looks or
Okay. Um, just just to quickly show you how this is going to work. Let's say I made that a um, I made that a a partner, a thinking partner, and we made it public, and um, you see it, and you like it. But so you come to this list here, and you say, "I like the fire detector, but I want it to talk like kids in California do," right? So you just go in and you change that line, and it'll it'll change the the text. It'll come back. So we've made these easy to duplicate, right? So you hit duplicate. Gives you a new one. You change the title. You go in and change. All right. You know what? I want Latino kids in Northern California here, right? And that's the the language I want to come back. I sh should probably mention that why we would do that is a good question. But what Bonnie and I started to think about is, yeah, like there are all these teacher things that we could ask it to do, but then we need to ask how can we get kids to pay attention, right? And maybe if we get it closer to the way they talk, it will make some sense. I've been talking a lot. Any feedback on what you've seen here so far? Any, and that, as you're talking about that, <laughs> I'll go get, find the example of this. Paul, I, yes. so one of the things like after we got off today, I was thinking like as a teacher, what would I wanted to do to help? Like if I can't help every student and all my kids read, you know, they read all their own things because the class is about finding what you're fascinated and curious about. Sure. So I would love for kids to be able to have a thinking partner like that recognized bias uh -huh. in the things that they're reading, right? So that it could recognize whether it chose words or something or, you know, like you said, it alerted them to you know be careful here this is you know this might be the view of so and so or i i don't know i just keep thinking about that you know we start our class off with a, that that we all have biases even unconscious bias we don't recognize it so how will we search for truth when we build our ted talk great i so so the the charge to you then would be to go create a paragraph that would, that so what you have to do as the teacher or as the person creating this, and look, you're a busy teacher, you won't don't have time to do this all the time, but so maybe I'll do it and, and we'll work on it together. But the, um, but we, we have to go out and understand what the wild horses, which are biased with the AI, right? It has its own biases. So what's it going to give back if we just put in a sentence, or right, give me the bias in this paragraph? I don't know, yeah. but that's the first step. And then we can say, okay, here's what bias is. It is the, and then we can go look up some definitions of what bias is. We can put that, that framework in and see if it, it follows those definitions. It probably will, right? Yeah. Um, but then maybe it gets too complicated. I don't know. So that's the kind of work this is all about. Yeah, so, even finding words that have, you know, that are, you know, can they find words that are neutral versus positive or negative connotations? I don't know if we could do something like that. That's a nice idea. I'm sorry, we should, I want, I'll just jump in here too. Yeah. If you, if, if you can make the deeper philosophical things be about language, that's exactly what AI is about, right? AI just plays with language. So if you can figure that out, that's 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 a really good idea. So your definition would be identify in this paragraph. Right? I should say that we have there 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 is a limitation to our system. You can't put like a whole short story in. Um, and I'm I want to work with this limitation. You can either choose a sentence or a paragraph. So just to, just to say that. Um, let me just show you though, I'm still sharing my screen now, and this is a, a paragraph from there, there. Um, and um, so I just wrote, my question was, I'm not sure, but I love, I'm not sure why, but I love this paragraph, right? That was what I put in. And then it took that prompt that we just went over and it came back with, if I may read, 
The natural flow and creative use of language in this paragraph is fire. Right off the bat, the author captivates our attention with striking descriptive imagery. And then he quotes from the, uh, the text here. The writer really plays with, with words in the middle of the paragraph, quotes the text here again. Very good. Blah, blah, blah. And it says, uh, yo, so that's fire. Now, and then it says, to get immersed in the words, you have to reread the text and focus on the vivid language and the imagery the author uses. Imagine what the scene looks like and feels like. Now, we didn't tell it to doing this, right? It's, it's kind of doing this on its own. What feelings are stirred in you? And, and the author paints a picture of the grand entry. What do you take away from the words that seem to be flowing from them? Feel free to reply if you found something new and meaningful in the text. So we're all, and so that's, yes, it can look for bias and it can do whatever. We can, we can think about that. I think we also want to think about how we can have these partners inspire kids, right? And help have them see beauty in the text that they might not have seen there before. Um, let, yeah. So let me be quiet and hear what conversation what are you noticing, thinking about as we are showing this? Am I making any sense? <laughs> I was immediately inspired by the the idea of the fire detector, and I had never heard the, the word fire being <laughs> used as what you say when you hear vivid language. But right. I, I thought the, the title was a little clunky, fire detector. Yeah. And I immediately thought of fire starter. Yeah. And as I reflected on that a little more, I thought of pitch wood, which is what we used to use when I lived <laughs> with a wood stove. That's how you start a fire. You take a little piece of the wood from the center of an old stump that's full of sap, and then you light that, and that starts the whole fire. Right. Cool. Those are good suggestions. Yeah. I. Um, let me just... Uh, let me jump just to, so one of the things that Jill mentioned was that she, they've been working with um, notice and note. So I did take uh, in the last couple hours here. Um, I took, I told it to make a list of two or three possible signposts, right? From this. And then we list the signposts from beers and what's his name? Povist. Probist, right? Um, and then, then we asked it to quote to show why it is that. So that I we checked out if that worked. That sort of does work. So here's the signpost listed, right? <coughs> so I want to kind of slow down and see if you want to get. So I would love. Here's what I would love. I would love if you would maybe go into your library and and um, I'll help everyone get there if you're not there and make one of these and start to think about that process, right? Or if you don't want to do that, <laughs> what else would you like to think about or do here? I, I don't want to kind of take more of our time. I have a question. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, is there something that um, is there something in AI that could uh, listen to a kid read and then ask questions as the kid reads to make reading like as if they're reading to an imaginary friend or whatever? Sure. So the our system and, and most of the systems that I know, I mean, they could be connected with oral stuff, um, but that would be pretty complicated at this point um, as, as one answer. But so if we're talking about silent reading, so let's leave it silent for a second, okay? So the AI cannot listen to you read, okay? Nope. But... But, but I don't want to lose your idea, though. What's the idea? That, well, it sounds like a good one. 
Yeah, I mean, I think probably the biggest problem in my school is that kids don't like to read. They don't want to read. You can't get them to read. I, we had that with my daughter. Um, it's pretty universal. So what if they, you know, started to read and, um, you know, it was a little more interesting because, you know, this little companion is there making it conversational, you know, and asking them uh, questions, you know, that are... Uh, designed to, uh, you know, make it interesting for the kid, you know, maybe they could even ask, you know, personalized things like, you know, personal experiences, you know, like, how does that, how does that um, match what you feel, you know, just like what, what teachers do, what good teachers do. But well, instead of, instead, I'm sorry, I thought you were done, done, Jake, I'm sorry. No, but, um, you know, I, I just keep remembering this um, episode of Black Mirror, where Miley Cyrus played this robot doll that a girl gets and she gets like highly addicted to, um, you know, but if, if there is any good, you know, in all this, this it's, you know, to get kids to read, I think, you know, and so that was just my question. I don't, you know, I don't know if so, that app is, is available. So what, I, what yeah. I was thinking, Jake, is that since it can't read aloud to you, and you're not much of a good reader. So let's say that those are the two issues there. How about if you used a graphic novel? So suppose you took a graphic novel that doesn't have any words and you had the kids begin to figure out what does this really mean? Because becoming a good reader means that you consider that you really get invested with trying to figure out what this is all about. So if you could then say, and spelling is no question. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just throw your ideas out there. What do you think this is all about? And what questions would you ask GPT to help you to think about this? Or if you had a thinking partner, let's say that you were reading this graphic novel and at the same time, you had your favorite basketball player reading it. What do you think the basketball player would be thinking and what are you thinking? So it seems like maybe one of the avenues into getting kids to engage with reading is not making it all so um, typically traditional of read a story, answer some questions, get along with it. And a graphic novel is usually a great entry into reading. Yeah, we do graphic novels a lot. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that we could act uh, so and, and, and Ben it's a great suggestion um, one of the things um, that somebody pointed out and I just brought up something where I knew there was an image here right so um, you could I mean it's not a graphic novel image but you could you could comment on an image right now right um I just want to point out a way to do this already. Um, where'd that comment go? Oh, here it is. I went there. It shouldn't have gone there. It doesn't matter. Oh. Oh, I know why I did that. Sorry. Let's try this again. <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. I, I'll, I'll use this as the example. You can reply with AI, so you can make a comment on. So I, I again, AI can't see the image yet. Uh, maybe you know, in six months, maybe it'll be able to. But right now, you could describe the image in your response to the image, and then you could have AI respond to that. Okay, so there is that. But let me, let's try to make what you just said for a second. Sorry. Um, Going back to my library. Let's make one together, OK? Um, because, and Jill, if I could just swing back to your thought about the bias thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'll just add in this, my first 20 ideas for what a thinking partner would be. Are, are all, are, none of them are what Jake is saying. They're not about inspiring the kid to keep reading. Right, although they're important for under being a good reader, 
I don't know. I just, I think we need both, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm going to, let's make. I don't make, know how to get to those thinking partners. Why can't I get to that? Okay. Um, make sure you're in the staging site, right? You go to my library. I'm in, I'm in the staging. Okay. Like, then my library. Where is my library though? Is it um, under on now the top, comment? Yeah. Right under now comment. I'm showing it now. It's Wait, like, hold on. Let me, let me see on yours. Yeah, mine just doesn't look like that. So hit, hit the now comment thing. Wait, I'm gonna, I'm on an article. I'm going to hit the now comment yeah, thing. Yeah, hit the now comment. Okay. Mine says, where's yours says my library and groups. My first thing says comments, upload document, public, public docs and collections, free accounts. Like it doesn't say my library and groups. Um, go to an article again. Okay. Let me just. Uh, this is important because <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't not gonna be able to go out and go in and play. Yeah, that's the hope. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just take it a second. I'm going to that one we did today. Listen to us. Okay. All right. So when I have that, uh, my screen, mine does not look like yours. My top thing. My, the bar that you have that says now common, it says my, libra my library and groups. Next to mine, it just says collection documents. for. Are you, are you logged in? Uh, Do you see your name on the far let right? Me see, let me know I am not. Oh, good. We solved the problem. Okay. <laughs> so you should be able to just use the Google button to log in there. Okay, I just did that. All right. Okay, but Jake, ready? We're going to try to do this uh, fast and quick, and let's see if it works. I'm going to go to a new thinking partner. What do you want to call this partner? You there, Jake? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> we can come back to that question. Charlie, I don't know. <laughs> Charlie. But it's a th this thinking partner, what, inspires you to keep reading? Or you said it's a quiet voice or something? Or Well, yeah, it just... Um... You know, if, if it could, if it could sense when the kid is like breaking stride, and then come in with a question, you know, like uh, maybe it, maybe it senses the kid's uh, pace is slow down or something. I don't know. I'm just thinking, like, you know, in the future. But, um, you know, at its most basic, it's just um, a kid reads a sentence or a paragraph, and then the. Uh, the computer asked it to. So with Ben here, it's it's about persisting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just, but um, yeah, yeah but, to, get them, to get them over the hump, but also also, you know, we we're taught as teachers, you know, you model your thinking, right? You you, uh, you ask yourself questions out loud, you know, when you're doing guided reading, and uh, you know, if the, and then you know, but there's also the thing about um, you know, kids love uh, t you know, talking about themselves too. So if you if uh, the if the uh, computer could just um, periodically ask the kid a question about the the reading, but it isn't like a robot because it's it's about what they just said out loud. That's the that's the new wrinkle of AI, right? Uh, for now, we can change this, right, and make it a funnier title or something. But I'm just going to call it "Questions and Connections," right? To if I can spell it right. To keep, to keep us reading. <laughs> okay, for now. Maybe that'll become the short description. So now, and this is just, we're just practicing. Everyone can throw in here. What will we tell the, the machine to do? A kid is reading a paragraph. They've got to the end of the paragraph. Um, they, they, they say, you know what, I'm really tired of this, but then he said, okay, let me see what this, uh, thinking partner can help me think about what, what does it, you said it, it could ask questions, right? What else could it do? Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we, I don't, I don't know. I rem I forgot where what I would, what would the teacher do? That's what, sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, right. If they, if they had like a private tutor there, you know, yeah. for what all would the, the world. What would, what would the private tutor say? Yeah. Right. It would say, um, 
you know, they want to ask you, uh, what was the gist of that paragraph or uh, what is your reaction to it? You know, if you if you don't want to make it seem like schooly, you can just say, um, you know, what does that remind you of? You know, you know, just ask the kid to just, you know, do an open question and open response just to react, you know, just to synthesize it, you know. Um, yeah. But it but it could be conversational. Right. So the kid can ask the computer a question right back if it's one of these like siri things or if it's one of these little hal robots right yeah 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 you're going a little beyond our context but that's fine uh, sorry <laughs> but no, no, it's, well, no, you'll it's, tell me it, you'll you tell me what's real and yeah, I'll, you know. so yeah. I, i'm starting out with be a private tutor right mm -hmm. private tutor helping me to keep interested in this text right and uh, if they get stuck on a word the kid could spell the word for the thing and um, you know that's the obvious thing is that it could uh you know, it could uh, help the kid pronounce the word. It could help define the word. I'm sure. I'm sure those those are just like grammarly tools that are already around, right? Yeah, but okay, we can. But we can borrow those. So I'm going to say, define any difficult words here. Ask me questions. Ask right. me questions about what? Uh, what was just read? Oh, that's going to happen. That's built in. So ask me questions that do what? That. Um, well, you, you want the kid to uh, use what they just read in some it way in the brain. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. It's not huge print. It looks sort of like the other. It's just got a different type font, and it's a little bit bigger. Okay. And then ask me questions that make me think. And then you, love. And then what? Uh, you said something about connections, right? Yeah. And then they, the, um, you could make personal connections. You could make text to self, text to world, all the stuff yeah. that ELA teachers do every day. Um, but let's, uh, let's see if we have to invite that or not. Um, and then um, use the Philadelphia end. slang to make it uh, to make it cool. No, Bronx slang. Bronx slang for the kids to make it cool, right? <laughs> that was fire. What did you think about that? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna just do that, and and really, and and what I what I hope I'm demonstrating a short description can't be blank. Whoa, go, Jeremy, <laughs> you just set this up. So what is this thing doing? This is um, this keeps me keeps you reading, you interested. Yeah, I mean, uh, and keeps me thinking while I'm reading. And thinking. Well, you're reading. Um, whether or not we need to give an example here in that box is a good question. But um, uh, so, what what I hope I'm demonstrating is that the way this works is you got to jump in and just make a mess, right? See what it does. And then come back and fix it as we go. So this is our this is our um, not, still private, so only editors can see it. But questions and connections uh, to keep us reading. Now I'm now I need to come out here, and here the testing on this end happens. You have to see how it works in a short story, how it works in a piece of, and, and we have in this collection. A short story. We have a thing from a novel. We have emergent. We have a really difficult text, right? I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick there. There again. Um, there's another, and and you can imagine you don't have to test everything once. It, so, and. The you there is anybody who wants to help out with this, right? And think about it. So I'm going to pick the first paragraph where he describes a powwow. Uh, I'm going to go here to the fifth. And kind of, so now I'm, this is actually the first time here I've just des described how we do this. I'm picking the fifth paragraph. I'm coming up here and clicking on AI. And then I'm, th I'm selecting my partner and I'm finding... You don't see this, but there's a whole drop down menu. I'm finding questions, connections to keep us reading. And then I'm going to say, 
I'm bored. Okay? So the kid, kid finishes the paragraph and says, I'm bored. We hit continue, and we see what it comes up with based on our description there. Okay. Um, what comes back is this box, which we can read, and it says, let's start by defining some of the difficult words in this passage. It, it goes on for how many words? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five words. So we might want to say only define three words, right? But I don't know. Maybe it's okay. So now, now let me ask you some questions to make you think. For example, what was the most interesting thing that Orville and his brothers saw at the powwow? Why do you think powwows are important events for Native American people? What do you think the slogan Native Pride signifies? Finally, let me invite you to make some personal questions. What are either items... That were, what other items are advertised on the t-shirts at the powwow? How did the campers at the powwow show? I don't quite understand that finally paragraph, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it made the connection thing. What do you think of that though? Um, helpful, I have not to helpful. Go. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Nice, you. Meeting you nice to meet you, Benna. Nice to meet you all. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it isn't what I designed on the first uh, iteration because it's 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 asking the kid to do five definitions right off the bat, and that's drudgery. Yes. For, if you're trying to bribe the kid to keep reading, maybe maybe uh, you know you do the the um, definitions at the end, or well, or you know, maybe we keep that separate, right? We, you could ask a kid if they um, you know if they saw any words in. The, that they that they didn't recognize um oh yeah um and then you know um maybe you so start in the question you could say yeah but i don't know if a kid would it, yeah i mean maybe if the if the computer had a sentence that said um i like the part where you read about the uh little you know yellow wagon or something you know and and um and then ask a question right because it's really important to show the kid that you're listening to them, right? If the mm -hmm. kid is reading, you know, to the computer. So, um, you know, then it's like, um, you know, do you have those kind of toys? What, you know, something, you know, you could just try to personalize it or, um, you know, or you could go back into the story and ask a, you know, a meaningful question like, uh, you know, why do you think the author put the wagon in that scene? You know, whatever, right. whatever, whatever is like, um, you know, whatever's like school -ishy, um, do it after you kind of like butter up the kid by, you know, <laughs> reacting to something that they read, right? Repeat back, you know, something that they read in the, you know, and, and make it into a form of a question to get the kid to interact with that new information, right? And then you could do something schooly after that. Yeah, I... And maybe the maybe the definitions and all that, you know, it just comes up as needed when you hit a hard word. Like if the computer doesn't understand what the kid said, then that might be a hard word. Right. Just to say, um, one that we created quite a while ago. There's a keyword finder. Mm -hmm. So it, it grabs the keywords from the and it gives definitions of the keywords and then. I, I think it asks. Uh, yeah, well, that, 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 yeah, that goes hand in hand with this. You 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 want to you want to uh, ask but, about the keywords, not not like you know meaningless stuff. Right, right. Yeah. Let me show you this one just quickly too, though. Um, there's um, I, I'm picking the same paragraph now. Guys, I got to jump off too, but sorry. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to connect with you tomorrow so I can make some thinking partners. Great, great. Okay, nice to meet you thank all. You. Um, Thanks. So this is a text friendy, <laughs> right? What it um, and if we had this anyway, we'll have to fix it. But um, the question is going to be um, help. Why should I care? <laughs> right? Isn't that what, always the question? <laughs> what this one does is it 
well, you'll see it in a second. I think it's pretty formulaic, but that's okay. We designed it that way. It 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 gives us three things. It gives us it it chooses a word, a a sentence, and a um, a phrase. I don't know why it's taking so long, but we'll see. And then it and then it turns that into a a, a poem. <laughs> so we were trying to figure out a way to make the response be playful in some way, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. The robot could do stuff like that. You know. So here's here's camping, and then and then there are dream there are dream catchers, flutes, tomahawks, and bows and arrows. I think it's useful to like see a sentence like that, and then native pride written in capital block block letters, and then the the poem is camping, dreaming, pride in all around, sights, smells, and sounds vibrate all abound. Like, not bad, right? And then at the end, it says, now it's your turn. Use your five senses and weave, cute, your own tale, right? So, so yeah, I, I think I like your reference to the word schooly. We need things that help kids become better readers. But we, if we have the possibility to do it in a non-schooly way, right? And we should try to do that. And I think we know how to do that. We just have to teach the machine how to do that. <laughs> yeah, in, in my school, we call that flow. It's like you you um you get the kids into like a flow of an activity and then you hit them with all the uh, higher order knowledge stuff. Yeah. All right. So I, I want to pull out and ask just a meta question of the two of you who are left. <laughs> is it, is this project kind of clear? Is how do we make it like, I think it's pretty exciting, obviously, but what are you thinking about it at, at least at this point? Fred, you haven't said much recently and you're, well, you're dropped in the middle of this, but yeah. 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 Uh, I I I, uh, I went to my now comment and I couldn't find the thinking partners anywhere. No searches resulted it, in it's, anything. So. It's in a special now comment. It's a, okay. it's a it's a staging site. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. So if you could if you could direct me to that, I'd love to play with it some more. We like, could we could do that right now um, while you're here. If you have five more minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah. And Jake, I, I, and Jake, thank you so much. We're we're getting ready for for a seder. So. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. Do you have five minutes? It's all yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, across, across, on the Jake, thank you so much. I, I want to give you permission to jump when you can. And great thinking with us here. No, <laughs> really. stay, no you can stay as long as you want. I'm just. Oh I'm yeah. Just, no, I'm I'm hanging out. I, I could I could listen. Okay. There. Good. Good. So um. Fred, across on the table, there is a blue post-it. Right. If you pull your cursor um, on top of that, it pops up. You'll see the word staging, uh -huh. and you'll see progress through technology. Right. Sta staging is the username you're going to need, and progress through technology, all one word, is the password you're going to need. Okay. We're... We have get, we have I've invited you to a staging site where we're messing around with this stuff, right? And yeah. you can get there by clicking on now the yellow <laughs> post it tells you to click on that big logo there. So click on the AI now comment logo. Right. <coughs> it, you should get a pop-up. Yeah. So that's where you put the word staging for the username. Uh, no, I don't get a pop up. I get, let's see. The 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 post have got big, but I don't see anything else. Um, oh, um, sorry. So double click on it. Or yeah, I tried that too. To, no uh, just go to a new tab. Then I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, Go. I'll check that out. Go to a new tab and just go to the site um, staging s t a g i n g dot nowcomment dot com. Okay. Uh, 
and it says cannot be reached. Um, it should. It, it oh, should. I got. I got. I misspelled. Sorry, my my okay. problem. There. Okay. It takes almost everybody three tries, so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, and then once you get there, you have to log into that mail comment. Right. And that you do by clicking the little tiny G Google button. Right. 